Hello and welcome to another podcast by the School of Surgery. My name is Dr Naomi Lasker and I'm joined today with Dr Peter Legg, who's an orthopaedic trainee. So today we're going to talk about hip fractures. Uh, a few things that we're going to cover today are why a hip fracture is detrimental, when you would suspect a hip fracture, what sorts of questions you'd ask in a history and what you'd look for in examination, uh, what to look for in an x-ray and then how to manage a hip fracture. So Pete, let's talk about why hip fractures are so detrimental. Okay. Um, hi, thanks Naomi. So um, hip fractures are an incredibly common um, condition that we come across in the elderly. Not only do they, they, they cause a significant problem in mobility, but also there's a large physiological insult, mm. um, particularly in um, our much older um, cohort um, with multiple comorbidities. And the, I think the first thing to think about with someone who's come in with a hip fracture is what the cause of that is and whether there's a medical cause for that mm. fracture. So it's important to think of a neck of femur fracture is not just a broken bone but also a physiological um, process that may have led to the um, the fall in the first place. Yeah. So is there anything in particular about the anatomy um, of a hip fracture that might lead to certain consequences? The neck of the femur is predisposed mm -hmm. to fracture and is why we see it so commonly. Um, particularly as we get older and our bone density changes, um, the, the, the um, demineralization of the bone um, as we get older and we become less mobile and also just the biomechanics leads to it being more commonly fractured um, when, when elderly people fall. Okay. Over here we've got a picture um, of the blood supply to the head of the femur. Uh, can you tell us a bit about this? Sure, so th the blood supply to the, um, the head of the femur is really what decides our management when, it, when we're talking about neck of femur fractures. The blood supply to the head of the femur comes from the profunda femoris artery um, and it enters along the, um, the base of the capsule where it inserts along the intertrochanteric line. Therefore, when we talk about neck of femur fractures, we talk about whether it's an intracapsular or an extracapsular fracture. Mm -hmm. uh, and the reason we talk about it being important is because this is where the blood supply inserts. Therefore, if you have a fracture that is within the capsule, so an intracapsular fracture, mm -hmm. um, the blood supply to the femoral head has been disrupted. Mm -hmm. When the blood supply is disrupted to the femoral head, what you'll find is that um, the head can undergo a vascular necrosis, so that the head will, um, will necrose and will no longer be viable and will, over a process of a few weeks to months, um, deteriorate to the point where it's no longer viable. Therefore, it, it changes our management. However, if we're talking about extracapsular fractures, mm. so our intertrochanteric or subtrochanteric fractures, the blood supply is likely still intact. So it means the um, fracture might be amenable to fixation rather than um, arthroplasty, which means replacement of the joint. Okay. So when exactly would you suspect a, a hip fracture? So as we've alluded to, um, hip fractures are very common in the elderly, particularly in falls. But we also have to think about the sort of the middle age or the younger cohort in high mechanism injuries. So thinking about our trauma patients, our uh, motor vehicle collisions as well. But overwhelmingly more we think about the elderly population, the frail population, the multiple fallers, the people with cardiac comorbidities or people with osteoporosis or osteoarthritis. Um, so really we have to think about our, uh, our geriatric medicine, I think, is the, yeah. the, um, the people to really focus our attention on. Um, the keys for suspecting a neck of femur fracture are really the, the history and the presenting problems. Yeah. Um, so if, 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 for example, you're an A&E uh, clerking a patient, what, what, what sorts of things would you ask in the history? So the first thing you need to think about is, is the mechanism of injury. Um, so is this a fall from standing height? Is it a fall from a chair? Is it a fall down a flight of stairs? Um, however, that may not be able to differ, differentiate between whether this is a neck of femur fracture based on that because some people will fall a whole flight of stairs without having a hip fracture, some will fall from a chair and get it. But a mechanism is very important in understanding um, what the potential fracture is. Secondly, is there medical comorbidities, which we've kind of discussed already. Yeah. So very comorbid morbid, um, elderly people are likely to have it. And also people with things like osteoporosis are much more likely. Okay. Is there anything specific that you'd look for in examination? On examination of a, um, of 
any any limb really what we need to think about is a neurovascular status not whether it's an open or a closed injury but specific to neck femur fractures i think the, the typical thing um, that we see is a shortened and externally rotated leg mm -hmm. uh, and that is the typical finding with a, a neck femur fracture that is displaced but not always present but it should steer you relatively safe in exams so you mentioned if it was displaced there so if it's undisplaced are you unlikely to see this you may well do, yeah. You may well not see this in a completely undisplaced neck and femur fracture. Okay. So then say we were in A&E and then maybe dutifully got an x-ray. Uh, what exactly do you look for on an x-ray? And uh, we've got a couple of pictures here. What, what, would you, what would you look at? Okay, so first of all, you need to have a look at the adequacy of your image and make sure you're seeing both hips and the, and the pelvis as well. Because it's, it's quite easy sometimes to, to spot one abnormality and, and miss others. So... The important thing is to be systematic with your approach to any sort of x-ray. Um, having said that and, and having, a, having had a, a um, routine for looking through an x-ray in a standardised way, I think the things to look at are really discontinuities in the cortex um, and the things specifically for neck femur fractures that you'll hear talked about is Shenton's line, which is a, a line that runs along the medial aspect of the, um, the, the femur, what we call the, the medial calcar, runs up the medial side of the femoral neck um, and runs uh, along the, the inferior border of the superior pubic ramus. Mm -hmm. That should be a nice gentle curve and without any interruptions. And sometimes all you'll see is a disruption of what we call Shenton's line. So there'll be uh, the jagged appearance or won't be a nice smooth curve. So that, sometimes that's the um, quite a good telltale. Mm -hmm. Other things you can see that are more subtle, sometimes you'll see um, increased bone density which is actually the superposition of, of the femoral neck where it's been shortened and, and um, essentially a double width is being presented. Um, so it looks like it's, it's twice as, as dense and sometimes that's a subtle sign. The other, other things to look at is the symmetry between both sides. Mm. Um, so is that leg rotated? It, does the femoral um, neck look shorter or different in some way? So those are some clues you can have um, that may allude to a neck of femur fracture. Um, how can you tell the differences between an intra and an extra articular fracture on the x-ray? Okay, so the, the, the definition of a, an intra and an extra articular fracture is whether the fracture lies um, within the capsule or without, uh, outside the capsule. And the capsule itself lies um, along, the insertion lies along the intertrochanteric line. Therefore, if you have a fracture that is distal to that, so lower than the intertrochanteric line, that's an extra capsular fracture. If it goes within the intertrochanteric line, so more towards the femoral head, then that's an intracapsular fracture. Um, and that, that's how we discern our, our management principles, really. Okay, so are there different management um, protocols in place for these different fractures, then? Sure. So if we talk about broad brush strokes for you know, the 95% the of the cases, um, the intraarticular and the extraarticular fractures will follow this, a similar pattern. Um, an intraarticular fracture, as we said, interrupts the um, blood supply to the femoral head. Um, therefore, the risk of avascular necrosis of the femoral head is high, and um, so we tend to go for a joint replacement or hemiarthroplasty, or in the slightly fitter um, population, a total hip replacement. Um, now, the the um, the details of that are not really in the scope of this podcast. Mm. The idea being that um, you need to replace the, the femoral head because of the risk of avascular necrosis. I think that's what you should take away from that. So an intraarticular fracture is really about um, removing the risk of avascular necrosis mm. by doing a hemiarthroplasty um, to replace the femoral head. Whereas if we talk about extra capsular fractures, because the risk of um, a vascular necrosis isn't there because the blood supply is still intact because mm. um, it hasn't been disrupted, the capsule is still intact, um, the intertrochanteric line hasn't been disrupted. Um, we can plan to fix the fracture mm. um, by doing internal fixation and what we commonly do is uh, called a DHS, a dynamic hip screw or an intramedullary nail, um, commonly called a gamma nail. Okay, and uh, for, you know, after these procedures and after the patients sort of recover, are there any sort of long-term requirements um, or any sort of long-term management that's needed for these patients? Sure, yeah, so um, if we look at the immediate post-operative period, we, we think about our, our typical post-operative care, 
and worry about complications from that point of view. So bleeding infection being common ones. Um, but after we got to that stage, we need to think about our rehabilitation. So quite a few of these um, patients will go into a rehabilitation program, whether that's in hospital, in the community hospital, or, or um, in the home with conjunctive physiotherapy and occupational therapy. Um, and also we need to think about what the cause of the fracture is and preventing further ones. So um, things like um, doing DEXA scans for osteoporosis yeah. and providing them with um, medications such as um, bisphosphonates and um, vitamin D supplements um, to try and increase their bone mineral density to reduce the risk of further fractures in the future. Um, and thirdly is to kind of think about other, um, whether it's physiological or the social factors that led to that fracture, whether actually their care package is, is appropriate, do they need more help at home? So all these other things that tie in to try and prevent further fractures in the future. Well, thank you very much, Pete. Have you thank got you any other much. final points on hip fractures that you'd like to uh, tell our listeners? Um, I think hip fractures are incredibly common. It's something we'll see far more and more in the future. Um, an x-ray that doesn't show a hip fracture doesn't always um, mean there is no mm -hmm. fracture. I think clinically, if a patient looks like they have a neck of femur fracture and behaving clinically like they have a neck of femur fracture, mm -hmm. speak to your orthopaedic doctors. Um, what because, do you tend to do then? So in that sort of sense, um, if we can't see it plain on an x-ray, we may get a CT or an MRI of the hips. Um, so if in doubt, always ask someone. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank so just, you. just to recap uh, what we've learned today. So we've learned about why hip fractures are so detrimental in sort of the key populations. So essentially geriatrics, I think. Yeah, um, that's fair. And, uh, and how to suspect it and you know what to look for on, on history and examination, um, how you would find um, a hip fracture on an x-ray and uh, the different management. Remember you can follow us on Facebook at School of Surgery, on iTunes, on Podomatic at schoolofsurgery.podomatic.com and finally by searching School of Surgery on YouTube. Thank you very much and see you next time.